Hi everyone, I am here with a true story from the More Glimpses of Heaven book. Stories that hospice nurses send in from their patients who have passed away. And this story is about Mr. Winters. And it's sent in by Cookie um, Shriner. And your, it says, your paperwork is finished. There is nothing left to be done. So I'm taking it Mr. Winters was worried about his paperwork and wanted it taken care of before he passed away. So let's just see. The moments I treasured most during my time at the hospice center were the initial walks down the dark corridor as I arrived early each morning. I would stop at each room and look in on the patients and family members as I made my way to the nurse's station to begin my day. How is everything with you this morning? I would ask. <clears throat> One morning, Mr. Winters, who was to be discharged to his home in about a week, summoned me to come closer to his bed. I had a nightmare last night, he said to me. I couldn't sleep. I dreamed I was in a place that had two tall iron fences one in front of the other. Through the fences, I could clearly see many people on the other side that I knew had already died. They kept looking at me, but didn't say a word. I managed to get the first gate open, and when I got into the second space between the first and the second gate, the first gate closed behind me quickly, and I was completely trapped. I had nothing, no food, no water, and nothing to keep me warm. I started calling loudly for someone to help me, but none of these people could hear me. A strange looking man appeared in front of me. He looked at me carefully and said, you need to do your paperwork first. And then he simply went away. It's a terrible dream as I am completely trapped and I have no way to get out and no one to help me. I sat down on the chair beside his bed and listened very carefully to him as he related his nightmare to me. He seemed relieved just to have someone to talk about it to. And when he was finished, he laid his head back onto his pillow, exhausted, and closed his eyes. We'll talk later when you've rested, I said to him as I left the room to continue my morning rounds of visiting other patients. Later in the morning, I went back to visit Mr. Winters and we discussed the bad dream he had told me about earlier in the day. Do you think this means something? He asked me. Well, yes, I think it does, I said. I believe you've been given a heads up, if you will, that your time on earth is coming to a close and that you still have work to do to prepare yourself for your next life with your creator. How am I supposed to do that? He asked me. I'm going home soon. You know one day next week for sure. Don't worry about next week, I said to him. Right now you need to patch the holes that seem to be in your soul. God sends us messages in unlikely ways. Sometimes this is one of those times you need to pay attention now. You are blessed to be given this extra time and a chance to make everything right. This is a warning and you need to get busy and make certain that everything is right between you and others and with your creator. Open your heart to God and together with him, start fixing what is unresolved in your life. Whatever is not resolved between you and your family or friends or whatever is not settled between you and God. Work on that now. Ask him to show you what you need to do and he'll help you, I promise. Mr. Winters remained quiet the whole time. I spoke, looking at me intently and taking in every word I said. Every day for the rest of the week, Mr. Winters would sadly say to me each morning, I had that nightmare again last night. It's terrible. 
I had that nightmare again last night. It's terrible. Then he would repeat it exactly, word for word, never changing any detail of it, as if it was etched in his mind and heart completely. Each day I would prayfully encourage him to ask God to help him resolve everything that needed his attention so that he could go home to him in peace. It was evident to me that he was working on it in earnest and so badly wanted it resolved. One morning, as I made my usual rounds, I stood in his doorway, trying to decide if he was asleep or awake. If he was sleeping, I did not want to disturb him. But when he sensed my presence, he turned to me and smiled. Last night, the man came to me in my dream again, he said. He said to me, your paperwork is now finished. There is nothing left to be done. With that, he peacefully rolled over, closed his eyes, and fell asleep. He seemed relieved that his paperwork and all that is entailed had been completed, and now his heart could finally truly be at rest. During the next few days, Mr. Winters continued to be content and sleeping peacefully every time I stopped by to check on him. The day before Mr. Winters was to go home, he died in his sleep. His paperwork was completed, and he had now received his eternal reward, just as God wanted him to. The scripture reflects many instances throughout history of God's messengers coming to earth to warn, to direct, and to enlighten his people. Joseph was warned by an angel to take Mary and Jesus into Egypt. Mary was told by the angel Gabriel that she was to be a mother of Jesus. And Jacob's son Joseph knew through a dream that he would one day rule over his brothers. God enlightens our minds and hearts today in the very same way. He stays with us until the end of our lives, wanting us to come home to him for all eternity. Amen. Yes, he does when it's our time because only God knows when our time is up because each and every single one of us, God put us here for a purpose because we all have a special job to do for him on this earth while we're here. We surely do. And only he knows what that job is. Sometimes the littlest things are the biggest things to a lot of people. And you may not even recognize it, what you're doing, but to one, but to somebody, it could be the biggest thing and change their lives 100%. I hope you guys enjoyed that story, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Good night, guys.